Hey guys, Julia here. Welcome back to another video and we're just gonna get right into it. I'm setting up my bullet journal for March. If you wanna see how I've planned for this setup, coming up with the theme, choosing supplies, colors, fonts, definitely check out the prep vlog that I'll link up in the cards and down below. But for now, I'm pulling out some watercolors along with this nifty little water brush that came with the palette. This will keep things nice and tidy, like I don't even have a jar of water. I'm just gonna roll with the brush. The theme this month is umbrellas and parasols. National Umbrella Day is actually in February, apparently, but I thought it would be a cute and simple theme for March. The doodles this month are extremely easy, which is perfect because I need setups to go a little quicker this year, honestly. There's just a lot going on for me, and I didn't even do a lot of pre-sketching this time around but you can probably pick up what I'm putting down for this cover page. I'm using a super thick size 12 fine liner to do basically an elongated J with a thicker top and a thicker bottom for the handle first. And then I'm just working in the umbrella shapes on top of that. For the open one, I'm kind of doing like a crisscross, almost spider web look, but this transparent look gave everything a more graphic feel. And you guys know I like to spice up themes and doodles any way I can. I also had some scrapbooking paper from Notebook Therapy's Lucky New Year's box and the colors fit perfectly. So I definitely wanted to use that to add some additional texture to the theme. I don't think that box is available anymore, but all of their scrapbooking kits are so pretty and natural looking. And if you didn't know, you can now use Royal Tin over at Notebook Therapy to not only support the channel, but to also get 10% off. The lettering for this month is super fun and funky as well. It's inspired by a font called Westside. It's a free font that's inspired by poster designs and illustrations from the 1980s. I'll leave a link for that below too if you wanna check it out. It was a perfect match too because the style of the umbrellas was also inspired by a Pixar movie poster for the blue umbrella. I haven't even seen that yet, but I saw it while browsing Disney Plus and I thought it was super cute. So March is also Women's History Month and I wanted to add some female positive energy somewhere in the theme. I was looking for quote ideas and came across this beautiful quote on Pinterest and absolutely had to use it for the quote page this month. So it's, her soul is fierce, her heart is brave, her mind is strong which yeah, definitely need to hear it as I'm getting into the weeds with work and the wedding and travel and spring cleaning and just all the things. This will be a reminder that, hey, I got this. Okay, flipping over to the next spread, this is going to be the monthly calendar section. Not much is changing with the calendar itself. I'm still loving the one page vertical calendar layout. I guess a funny change is that I've just completely given up on using a ruler for this type of stuff. I'm just better off with my wonky almost straight lines because your girl be messing up with the ruler too damn much. So here we are. But over on this other side, I'm trying something a little new. These are going to be weekly task boxes, just for those things that I kind of want to get done in a particular week or notes that pertain to an entire week. They aren't going to be so pressing that they need to go in the weekly spread and take up that precious space. But I've noticed these sort of weekly things are coming up more often. So I thought this would be a good space for those. And even with that addition, I have some extra doodle space. So of course, I'm going to add a couple of those umbrellas in the extra space and I'm still not over how quickly I was able to set these pages up. I'm not saying that I'm completely throwing my maximalist tendencies out the window but at least for a good chunk of this year I think I definitely need to pull back on some of the hardcore decoration and sort of be more realistic about my time constraints right now. I've always sort of been about function as well so I think I'll definitely be looking for new ways to maximize function. If you haven't already considered subscribing to the channel, if you're interested in new ways to sort of marry decorative journaling with the functional. All right, flipping over to the next spread and speaking of pulling back a bit, this next one is my dashboard spread and I'm eliminating a usual element here. 
my habit trackers. I found that I haven't been loving habit tracking these last couple of months. And with some things like reading, it's now definitely a habit. And every day I can read, I will read. So it just started to feel a little redundant to track that. And there aren't really any hard and fast habits I feel the need to track right now. So I'm not doing it. But instead I have my media log taken up most of the space here. I'll write in what we're watching, rate it, write a little one sentence synopsis. That's been really fun to do and actually really helpful as I feel like I'm constantly battling my whole movie and TV show memory situation. But yeah, I have that. And then over on the side, I have three boxes, one for invoices that are going out at the end of the month, one to track any yearly focus progress, and then the last one for wedding tasks. And while I was working on this, I flipped back to another page before the paint was fully dry and I got this little smear action happening up here. We'd love to see it. <laughs> The next spread is the first weekly spread. I'm still on my dailies kick, so I'm starting to spread off with a section for a couple of task banks. And the top one is for work-related tasks, and the bottom section is for personal things that I'll pull over to the daily sections. Across the top will be where I'll note any day-specific meetings, and the month does not start on a Monday. It starts on a Wednesday. I goofed that up, but there's always a fix, right? <laughs> In this case, I just grabbed some black cardstock, covered it up, and went again, starting with Wednesday. Classic Julia stuff there. As you can see, I'm pulling the look of that west side font here for the day headers as well. I love how using this sort of display style lettering made this whole theme seem not as typical, you know, like it's got some quirk to it. And I think the lettering does play a role in that for sure. I'm also numbering the weekly spreads, not like what week it is in the year, but just like the number of week it is in the month. I did this just so I can keep up with those weekly boxes I put in the calendar spread. But yeah, my weekly spreads have been looking a little blank in the initial setup lately because I've been using these like day-to-day -day approaches. But if you follow me over on Instagram and you totally should if you don't already, but over there I do show how these look after the pin. I typically put those in my stories along with photos of my computer screen, photos of my dogs and random internet musing. So hopefully I'll see you over there as well but I've added in some of that scrapbooking paper and my Costa Rica paper to jazz up that daily void in the middle. I'll go ahead and do the header for the first of the month and that is it for this first weekly spread. Okay, let's take a look at all of the initial spreads I've set up for March. We have our cover page with the female positive quote, and I'm introducing the colors and textures for the theme here. I have a calendar spread where I'll have a monthly overview of meetings, events, birthdays, and a place for week specific notes and to do's. Then we have the dashboard spread where I'm tracking and rating media along with some monthly task boxes. And then there's the first weekly spread where I'll work through the day-to-day -day tasks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the setup this month. If you wanna see how I got to this point, check out the prep vlog here and I'll catch you all in the next one.